Uh, the marathon runners will be uh, coming out at the moment. In fact, they're in the funnel now, and the race is due to start at 6 o'clock. The temperature, well, it's a uh, humid evening. Uh, there's very little wind, but it is getting cooler by the minute. And of course, the time, uh, 6 o'clock in the evening here. So uh, the race will be run inside two and a half hours. So it should be in the cooler of the evening towards the finish. Well, the girls are down there in the tunnel. There are 31 of them taking part. And uh, whilst the champion is in there, uh, Rosa Mota of Portugal, if you spot her, she is wearing number 613. She's right in front. Uh, Rosa Mota is the defending champion, and that's a good shot of her right in the middle. There's no doubt that the uh, athlete that um, David Moorcroft mentioned, Catherine Dora, number 86, has got a very, very good chance of this. She's the East German girl who has never, ever lost a marathon. Uh, true, she hasn't competed in America. She's just at the top of the shot, jogging up and down, wearing number 86. She's never competed in America, but she's competed twice in Japan, where she won in Nagoya this year, and also last year in Tokyo. She won the European Cup Marathon, and also she won the 1985 World Cup Marathon. So that's some record, Brandon Foster. It's a tremendous record, and the fact that she's never been beaten in a marathon, uh, bringing her into this championship, it's a good experience to have, because in, a, in, in the marathon, confidence is what it's all about and she'll be in there knowing that she's never had anybody in front of her I imagine she would have liked to have run some marathons in New York or in Boston or in or even in London but the East Germans choose to keep their athletes away from the rest of the international scene and in the marathon in particular I think they maybe miss something because uh, you know New York Boston London Chicago marathons really have been at the forefront of the revolution in women's marathon running particularly and uh, I think they maybe we'll have to change some of their policies in the future uh, look out too for another athlete that uh, David Moorcroft mentioned 298 Veronique Marrow who is the British record holder uh, Veronique just on the edge of the shot uh, she was uh, injured in the London Marathon and didn't finish but uh, was quite rightly selected for this uh, European uh, 478 they're concentrating on by the way is another uh, outstanding athlete uh, Verskins of Holland uh, but Veronique was uh, quite rightly selected for this uh, European Marathon and if she's fit She's coached by Brian Scobie, and he's a good judge. If she's fit, she could run very well as well. Uh, Veronique Marrow, a member of the Leeds Club, French-born, but uh, she's lived in England for the last 10 years. Ron Pickering. Well, the interesting thing, David, I think uh, now is the course that awaits these girls. It's uh, a question of following the blue line, and you'll see it on your screens. But unfortunately, it's not a simple out and back course because uh, Stuttgart is a pot. It's a town uh, surrounded by hills. The organizers had to work very hard to find a flat course. And Brendan Foster, David Coleman and myself went out on this morning. We we're very impressed by the course, but they've got to go out along a flat course and then a couple of big loops and then go out along the Necker Valley and, and back again in order to get the 26 miles, 385 yards without too many hills. There's one sort of uh, a bit of a bump uh, at about five miles it's going to hurt them on the way back but we were all three impressed by the course and as david Cohen was saying there are 31 starters their average age is 30. there's a lot of experience they've earned their way into these championships we're looking at rosa Mo motor of course the defending champion but uh, wearing 613 but of course she will no longer have it as easy as she's had it in the past. I'm not suge suggesting, of course, that she's won it easily, but of course, in the European Championships, the women's athletic program has been expanding since they were limited to the 400 meters. They've added on the 1500, the 3000, they've got the 10 kilometer walk, the 10 kilometer run, and the marathon. They've expanded all the time. And there's our British girl right in front of the picture with a French name, Veronique Marot, uh, wearing 298. So it's a good, very impressive field and a very good course. So where they go on their 26 mile journey, 26 miles, 385 yards. And it's a very slow start indeed. And suddenly Mota decides to take it on, the reigning champion. Followed by the girl who's never been beaten over this uh, marathon distance, Catherine Dora. And we understand they run about uh, just over two laps in the stadium and then go out through the industrial uh, part of Stuttgart for the first uh, three or four miles and then out into the country through the vineyards of the Necker Valley. They're getting tremendous applause, but they've started very gently. They have with the defending champion Rosa Moda in just taking the easy lead there. 
Katrin Dore from East Germany in second place. And if, if we look at the, those two athletes, it's a remarkable contrast between Rosa Mola, the tiny Portuguese girl in the lead, who looks to me like a marathon runner, and right behind her, Dore, the East German, who's big and strong and chunky and obviously a very, very good marathon runner, but an interesting contrast in sort of build and power and strength. Well, this is sensible running because uh, it's when they get out on the uh, on the road and in the latter part of the race, the second half of the race, that the real business starts. Uh, 6.09, uh, chatting to her teammate there is the other Portuguese girl, Varado. She's uh, got a bit of international experience. She won the 1986 Jersey City Marathon. Uh, she ran in the Olympic Games. She was way down in 38th place uh, in Los Angeles, but uh, she's quite experienced. Motor leads, Dora in second place. Uh, the Russian girls, by the way, we've got three in this. Pocket Shaver, Kramankova, and uh, Gumarova. Uh, they're all in the 233-234 bracket. Uh, but, of course, uh, they've not really been tested internationally too much, so uh, they could be a lot better than that. Yes, I think you'll hear us uh, saying during the commentary that uh, the experience will show when we start talking about someone like Carla Burskins, who's wearing 478, who was the winner of the Frankfurt, second in Osaka, fourth in Chicago, first in Honolulu. There are now marathon races all around the world, and this has moved on very considerably since these girls, or women, rather, last ran in a European championship. It's that sort of experience that's improved up. Uh, although it looks very gentle at the moment, there's enough experience to push it along so that we're looking at something uh, sub two hours and 30 minutes. Interesting, actually, that the first... Uh 400 meters was run in 96 seconds, which is just over six minute mile pace. Rosa Mota's got enough international experience to know that that's the way to start a marathon. But I was interested in your point, Ron, about the uh, the way the events moved on, because in, in 1982, the world record stood at 2.25 for the women's marathon, which was the time the first time they ran here. It now stands 2.1, and the women, particularly in their and Benoit, battered record, one and a half minutes of the marathon record in a few years is just showing you that this event is coming into real significant status now. Yeah, the only disappointing factor about that, Brendan, is that someone like Ingrid Christensen has come down from marathon running to show that she's superb at 10,000 meter running, good enough at 3,000 meter, and now there's a choice for these girls over the various events, and we're seeing a marathon without the great Ingrid Christensen running in it. And without the great Greta Waits, which is quite interesting, actually, because Greta has been injured all season, Got, got started her training about four or five weeks ago and actually came on so quickly that our coach thought she might even uh, run in the marathon, but unfortunately she changed her mind. The main reason she changed her mind was because she was very worried about Rosa Moda. The athletes uh, leading the stadium to tremendous applause. It's a stadium that holds 71,000. There are between 40 and 50,000 watching at the moment. Motor leads Dora in second place, then Kramankova of Russia was the third girl. And uh, Veronique Morrow of Great Britain in the middle of the pack. Three have broken away. Burskins is 478 from Holland. 613 is Rosa Mota, the champion. And Fogli, the silver medalist from Italy, wearing 400 silver medalists four years ago. Uh, they are now away from the uh, unbeaten Dora of East Germany, who was many people's favorite. Also in that uh, group behind of three, uh, Keskitalo of Finland, uh, plus the Soviet athlete Kramankova. But after a very gentle start, the pace began to build. And when they got alongside the river here, which is really pleasant running country, through the vineyards and everything uh, on the banks of the river, the uh, Rosa Moda, who's just continually applied the pressure, is slowly beginning to pick it up. Now they're down to a group of three. Two of the three we really expected to be there, Carla Burskins and Rosa Moda, but very surprised to see the East German drop off as early as this. So the pace is obviously having some effect. Just wondering, actually, um, whether it's pace or humidity, because uh, in the stadium itself, sitting in the commentary box, it's pretty warm. Well, I bet it's warmer out there than sitting in the commentary box, David. I, actually, I noticed Rosa Moda grabbed a sponge and she handed one around to the other runners at one of the feed stations earlier, which indicates that maybe what, you're just, what you just said is applying here. And uh, I noticed Kirsty Jacobson, the uh, Danish girl, who dropped off again very, very early. Um, she was sweating up a lot, her face was red and puffed up a little, so uh, maybe the uh, humidity is having an effect. They're coming towards the 10-kilometer mark, just beyond six miles. 
This, uh, actually, if we get any scenic shots from the helicopter coverage, uh, this is a beautiful part of the course, running alongside the Necco River uh, through the vineyards, and it's uh, quite well protected, that small country road. Very little wind. Uh, but this is a pretty decisive break by these three. And no doubt, having got away from the rest, for a while they'll be content to help each other. Well, they're, they're only, they've only run about six miles, so the race is very, very early. There's 20 miles to go, and uh, a surprising, surprisingly, it's this field shattered like this. I was talking about the East German, Dora, who'd just gone through the, out of the picture there, leading that second group. And I'm just wondering whether the East Germans and the Russians need to really take part in international competition in the middle and long distance events because they are tending to slip behind there. They maintain a, a very high performance in the technical events, but marathon running, long distance running has really taken off worldwide, and maybe they should start getting involved. Well, news from the marathon, and we're now down to two in front. Rosa Motor, the gold medalist of four years ago from Portugal, and number 478. Uh, Burskins of Holland, who's made such a dramatic improvement in, in the last, uh, well, 12 months or so. Um, in third place by herself, the silver medalist from four years ago, Laura Fogli of Italy, who's finding the pace too fast. And certainly they're stepping up the speed gradually all the time. Well, the pace really has picked up. And the interesting thing here for me is that the girls, are, as they drop off the pack here, they're dropping by big amounts. They're going quickly yards ahead. And I think Rosa Moda is piling the pace on all the way. I think she's pushing. She's pushing very, very early, but she's a really good top class, one of, one of the best two or three marathon runners in the world, really. And she knows what she's doing here. And um, she just senses now, I think, that Carla Burskins is struggling. So she's put her head down. She's begun to charge herself. She's the reigning champion. And she had a great streak of marathon runs she's getting faster all the time and this race she's really running it her way As the uh, helicopters are carrying the signal also the special cameras that are covering the race winding through the outskirts of Stuttgart through the countryside a Rosa motor by the way uh, it's interesting Brendan that uh, Portugal have produced so many good athletes over distances especially men in recent seasons but one or two of the girls are showing well too there's Kunhar as well just come through 14 kilometers there but the Portuguese really they've uh, middle distance and long distance running is the, about the only thing they do in in serious athletics and uh, Carlos Lopez certainly inspired a lot of runners in Portugal and his coach has been responsible for bringing on many many good long distance runners but it's a great place to live and train you know they go down to the Algarve in the winter and it's very very pleasant down there for running just here coming through the shot is Laura Fogley who is a silver medalist behind Rosa Motor in the last European Championships but going to that port back to that Portuguese thing um, they are expecting Rosa to do very well here Ron and there's quite a turnout for these women aren't there friend of that this is we're going through small rural towns and yet they're being it's lined with the crowd this is the heartland of Baden Württemberg near to the Schwabian Alb and fairly near to the Black Forest. It's a beautiful part of the country in which this city of the Mercedes-Benz, Stuart Garden, stands. Name derived from a stud farm a thousand years ago. And uh, the West Germans, of course, traditionally love their track and field. It really is their number one sport. And they'll be enjoying this because they're seeing a champion in action. And she really is putting the screw down tight very early on the race. They've got over the hill and she looks as though now Brendan, she's got the uh, the countryside to herself. Well, she really spurted there, and as I was saying earlier, that when the gaps are opening, they're opening very, very quickly. And Rosa Moda senses that Carla Burskins was struggling. She put her foot down, but there's an awful long way to go yet. There's nothing, nothing cast iron during the marathon. They're not even 10 miles yet, so there's plenty running to do for both of the girls. But you know, interestingly, back further down the field the East German was beginning to look good again when we saw a quick glimpse of her and Laura Fogley dropped off the group in third place and uh, there's going to be a race on back there in all the positions Motor of course uh, is a very experienced marathon runner but uh, just looking at her record it's uh, worth recalling that uh, she is the third fastest marathon runner of all time uh, the all-time best performer Ingrid Christensen of course 
Uh, John Benoit, the Olympic champion from the United States, is the second fastest. And Rosa Mota at 223.29 is the third fastest ever. That's uh, some of the chasing group, but I suspect we must have dropped back actually through the athletes in third, fourth, and fifth places. Uh, these are the athletes who are much further down the field. Incidentally, I think uh, the producers had to drop back there to pick up those uh, other athletes on one of the fixed cameras because the helicopters you were shown a short time ago the signal is being screened by the trees where they're passing through that shaded part of the uh, of the countryside. And it's apparently interfering with the signal. So if you're getting a slight break in pictures at home, don't start adjusting the set. That's uh, nothing you can control, nothing the producer here can control. Two French girls in that pack, uh, Lelieu and Villeton. And one of the Finnish girls, Kampiolainen, very blonde girl on the outside of the pack, who was expected to do well. And Rosa Mota taking a drink and it looks quite gloomy. It almost looked part of the Black Forest, but we really are about uh, 50 kilometers from the Black Forest. This is just to confirm. The girl in third. Fogli, Italy. She too, taking on liquid. And the golden rule is that uh, it's not just liquid during the race, but they'll have taken quite a lot to stock up before the race. Well, the helicopter pictures seem to have settled down again. 15 kilometers and uh, Brendan Foster will be taking the time. Incidentally, um, they were going through a very shaded part there. You may have seen from the uh, the police escort and the timing car's headlights. Uh, it looked pretty dark, but it is getting much darker and rain was forecast for tonight. And looking out over the stadium, it looks as if the clouds are gathering. But of course, rain will be no uh, enemy to uh, these athletes. They don't mind it, Brennan, do they? No, they would be delighted if it began to rain, cooling them down nicely. The only possible problem might be uh, the underfoot conditions, but uh, they would settle for some cooling rain now because uh, it's, it's very, very still down there by the river. There's not much air around, and uh, notice Rosa Moda taking a lot of time with a drink at that last feeding station. And Rosa has, has used training in Portugal in a Porto where she lives. She's used to the decent weather and she, they go down in the winter down to uh, the Algarve and again they do some warm weather training. So uh, for her to spend a, as much time as that over the drink, I suggest that uh, maybe, the, maybe the heat, maybe the humidity is playing some kind of effect. The pace now, 15 kilometers in around 53 and a half minutes, would bring them home inside two hours 28. 51.25 at 15 kilometers there. That would bring them home in 2.27, under 2.27. So uh, they've really accelerated in the second and third five kilometer stretch. I was just wondering if we might catch a glimpse of a Rhine barge. I know it's the Necker, but the Necker is a tributary of the Rhine and uh, it's a working river. Uh, it, they, it meets the Rhine at Ludwigshafen and uh, the Rhine barges were coming down there this morning fully laden because uh, the twin town or the town just uh, near to Stuttgart where the great Mercedes plant is is at Sindelfingen and that's where they're all made and uh, that working river supplies uh, much of the uh, steel and iron and coal that goes into it but 47 seconds in front now from Burskins of Holland who's gone through a very very bad patch indeed so here's the European champion Long way to go still, of course. Uh, she's around the halfway stage. Burskin's there in second place. Last show we had was only about five seconds ahead of Fogli, the Italian who got the silver medal. But it rather looks if Fogli in the background there is beginning to drop back a little bit. But certainly the rain will be very welcome to the girls out on the... What? Just about the halfway, isn't it? They're just about halfway, and Rosa Moda is running an incredible pace now. She's running 2.24 pace for this marathon. Just to put that in perspective, the only people who have ever run faster than that are Joan Benoit, the Olympic champion, and Ingrid Christensen, the world record holder, and Rosa herself. So uh, we're talking about a tremendous performance. We're talking about the, the increasing pace all the way. For a moment, that cyclist right behind her caused her a little bit of disturbance. I don't think she was too happy with that, but she's uh, got her head down. 
and she's running a tremendous race. Meanwhile, out on the road, the marathon runners have got a bit farther to go than that, uh, but there has been quite a dramatic change. Uh, we understand, we're looking at the second girl at the moment, Fobley of Italy, and you can see in the background, Burskins, who's been in second place for so long of Holland, uh, has had another bad punch. But here's the leader, the champion, Rosa Mota of Portugal, and she's nearly a minute now in front. She's run a superb race, gradually building up pace all the time. She broke the rest and has now settled down to a slightly slower rhythm, but she, she's on her way to a very fast time. Well, she's got nothing to push her, but she's on, on the way to one of the fastest uh, marathons of all time if she was to maintain this pace. But it's an interesting way she's done it because she took it very, very easily at the beginning. They ran quite slowly for the first five kilometers. And then every, every kilometer split after that seems to have got faster. And the girls who've been breaking off the back of the pack, as I said earlier, they seem to have gone back at a tremendous rate. And uh, she's destroyed this field. It's, it's not an exciting race, but it's an exciting run. Looking back through those all-time uh, European lists, uh, Brendan, with Christiansen at the top, of course, then Rosa Mota, Greta Weitz, Catherine Durr, Burskins, a lot of them in there, uh, Veronique Marot. And down, uh, the next two British girls to show, Sally Ann Hales, uh, not running today, and the lovely misprint over Priscilla Welsh, which uh, she's listed here as 2 hours 28.54, and she's down as Reco Welsh. Everyone knows, of course, that Priscilla's very much younger. Well, that is an unfortunate uh, misprint. Rosa Mota now. Almost in, uh, well, she's just over six miles away from the finish. And we still understand she's about a minute in front. But there has been a change in second place. Burskins has gone through yet another bad patch. The third time she's had trouble. See the 32K mark there. Brendan Foster will be working out the time in a moment. Uh, but there's the times at 30. And uh, as you see, well, that lead now has in increased enormously, hasn't it? Three minutes, according to that. Uh, with Burskins in second place. But I, on our uh, tracking monitor, I saw Fogley a few minutes ago overtake the Dutch girl. So that is slightly out of date. Uh, the Dutch girl, Brendan, having a third bad attack, and that confirms it on that picture. It's been a good race between these two in second and third place. Burskins were ahead for a long time, and then Fogley caught her, and then Burskins went ahead again, and Fogley battled away, eventually hung on to her, and again overtook her. And these two have had an, an interesting race, but the real world-class running has been happening a couple of minutes down the road with Rosa Mota. Laura Fogley, remember, was second in the European Championships, in its first ever running, the women's marathon in Athens, behind Rosa Mota, so one and two then, and one and two again. But this race is taking place about 10 minutes faster than that debut marathon back in 1982 in Athens. Yes, it's interesting that. In fact, Rosa Mota won that race in two hours uh, 36.04, I think it was. So it, it is actually some 10 minutes faster, which underlines the amazing improvement there's been generally in women's long distance running. That amazing improvement has been led by people like Ingrid Christiansen, Greta Waits and Joan Benoit. But after the, you, you mentioned those three girls, um, you're talking about Rosa Mota being probably the next best in the world and Greta who's probably going to retire fairly soon which would leave Ingrid and Joan Benoit and Rosa Mota. So we are talking about the very, very highest world-class performance here. And one of the interesting factors is that uh, this introduction of the longer races for women uh, from 3,000 metres, 10,000 metres, the 10,000 metres walk and the marathon has uh, produced champions from new countries that weren't expected, really. It's not an East German-Soviet domination we're seeing. We've seen Norway come through tremendously. The Americans with their great uh, fun running brigade have matured and developed into fine competitive runners. We're seeing Italy produce them. We're seeing Portugal. And I think that's the fascinating thing about this, uh, Brendan, is that it's opened up new avenues for a whole uh, wealth of uh, countries and for individuals uh, where there hasn't been one particular country dominating the event. Well, I endorse that point completely because uh the thing about this game is, though, you don't need any technical facilities, you don't really need coaches, you don't even really need anything other than a pair of shoes and a T-shirt, and you go out and do it. And, I mean, the magazines that litter the world about distance running, you can learn it for yourself. I mean, people, people in this race will have learned it themselves, too. Well, meanwhile, out of the marathon, this surely is the girl on the way to the title. 
And that is illegal, by the way. We suspect it's her coach. It looks like one of the Portuguese. And really, he's not supposed to do that. He's running the risk of uh, some uh, zealous official who would only be acting according to the rules, uh, penalising Rosa Mota and disqualifying her. One hopes it won't happen because she's dominated the whole race. She's dominated the race and she's given, given a great display of marathon running, distance running, and great pacemaking. There's a coach who's been thrown off uh, a stadium for uh, just chatting to an athlete. That was a serious breach of the rules. That was clear coaching, motivating on the course, and a great pity because the girls dominated the race. Here's uh, Fogley doing so well. But what I was about to point out, that vis-a-vis uh, -vis the course, Rosa Mota is now on the hill on the way back. That's the hill that we dreaded this morning, and she's on that. If there is a problem, it's, uh, it's where she is now. She's gone down the tunnel and up again. This girl still has it to face, of course. She's a couple of minutes behind Fogley, who's battled on. And, uh, and you can see how dark it's got. She's coming into the rainier weather. They're coming towards the stadium now. It really is uh, still teeming with rain teeming hard with rain and um, and Rosa Mota has got that one struggle left the only question mark left is the hill that she's climbing now Brendan it's the only question mark that faces Rosa Mota but I think she's running smoothly she's running strongly and I think she's going to take that in her stride and I think I think Laura Fogley here that we're looking at in second place is uh, is coping with this hill pretty well too she She's, she's been comfortable throughout after she got away from Burskins, and now she's possibly enjoying herself here. Rosa Moda, a demonstration of class distance running here. She's quite happy that the rain's cooling her down now, and she hasn't got, we can't get the exact point, but she hasn't got very far to go in this race, and the rest of the field destroyed and miles behind her. Actually, she's not uh, all that far from the stadium, in fact. The lights of Stuttgart for the helicopter. Of course, they set out in daylight. They set out on a humid evening, and it's turned into a wet, well, not a cold night by any means, but uh, certainly a very damp night indeed. But as we've said so often, those are not bad conditions for marathon runners. Although the early stages, the first 10 to 12 miles, um, the humidity seemed quite high, and a lot of them seemed to suffer very, very quickly indeed. Well, I think the course and the weather conditions have been kind of the women marathon runners today. And uh, Rosa Mota is enjoying that. And she's, she's showing what a good, good class runner she is. She knew exactly what she was doing. She took it very, very easy at the beginning. And then she started to apply the pressure. And they peeled off the group one after the other. And that's a lovely way to run it, Ron. Yes, and she's going to enjoy the discipline of the West German crowd. Because if you think back to Athens, there were cyclists that were all over the course that were carving up the runners. They were running in and out. The police had a problem with them. The photographers got involved as well. And there she is on the screen to be seen by the, the crowd in the stadium. There's still about 40,000 here. And that's a, a brand new multicolored uh, screen where everything can be seen in slow motion as well. It's a tremendous innovation. And she's certainly with inside the stadium now. Well, then the last mile, and it's good running this bit. She'll be able to see the stadium, and it's gently downhill all the way. Rosa Mota of Portugal, the European champion of four years ago, storming through the wet streets of Stuttgart, revived, no doubt, by the sight of the stadium lights. So there's 40k on there. You may have seen on the map the uh, light flashing at 40 kilometers before, so we're not quite sure whether she's through that period or not. But she's certainly well within sight of the stadium. Well, this is the first marathon of the year. She was due to run in Boston, but got injured and then decided to change the plan for her season. She locked the world best for the 10-mile road race, Cherry Blossom race in Washington, when she ran just over 53 minutes, and then went back to America, where she spends quite a bit of time and won the Boulder Boulder race, over seven kilometers, and then came back to Portugal and has just been training up there in a Porto with her coach with occasional visits down to the Algarve, but uh, she didn't, she's done it all right. She's got herself completely uh, right for this one. It's her first marathon of the year. It probably won't be her last. She'll probably go on from here to run in Chicago or New York. The second champion of the games enters the stadium. Rosa Mota of Portugal.
the leader from the start. She led in the opening laps in the stadium. She's dominated the whole race. And she's coming away to win nearly 10 minutes faster than she ran in taking this title in Athens four years ago. She's enjoying this unique occasion. Gold medal in 82, the gold again in 86. And the time, well, she ran 2.36 in Athens, considerably faster today. Started slowly, really wound up the pace from about five miles through to 15 or 16. And the crowd following the progress of the race on the big screen, reveling in this run. And no doubt at all, this is a worthy champion. Rosa Mota wins the title again. And the news is, she's at least one kilometre ahead of the second girl, Laura Fogli of Italy, who was second four years ago. The Portuguese becoming so strong in distance running among the male athletes, but also building up a very respectable group of middle and long distance runners among the uh, female athletes. And the flag of Portugal is taken deservedly on the lap of honour. Well, the women's 800 metre heats were due to go on, but with the marathon runners now back in the stadium, um, perhaps a minute or two earlier than the organisers expected according to their timetable, uh, the 800 metre heats will be held back for a moment or two. Well, she's very fresh, Brendan. Well, that was a great run. I think, I think when she got clear, she settled. For a while, she was running 2.24 pace, but I think she settled for all she needed to do, and she run, she was comfortable leader. The, the second place, Laura Fogley, isn't even in the stadium yet. It's a very warm, humid evening in Split. The time here, uh, an hour ahead of you at home, 10 past 5, in this uh, lovely harbour city. And the marathon athletes coming out, 25 of them, for this... Uh, well, it's a tough course. It's one of the toughest championship courses I've seen in recent years, and there's the favourite. The European Championship only run twice for women before, and Rosa Mota has won it both times, and she starts as favourite once more. Here now is Brendan Foster. Well, we've had a look around the course, and as you said, David, it is one of the toughest courses, but also the marathon courses have to depend on the geography of the city, and I don't think this course could have been any better in this city. In fact, I think the people who've organised the marathon course have been as kind as they possibly could be. And the fact of the matter is, it's, it's going to be tough, the conditions are going to be difficult, but they're running it at a, the best possible time of day, which is, uh, you know, it's going to be cooling from now on, it's been a pretty hot day overall. I think there's a really exciting race in prospect because we know that Rosa Moda really only wants to win this championship, she's not here to run best times or anything like that, um, and I think her tactics are obviously going to dictate the whole pattern of this women's marathon. The three Britons are Susan Tooby of Cardiff, Nicola McCracken of Hounslow, and Sally Eastall, member of St Edmund's Paces, who lives in the Ipswich area. The British numbers, Sally Eastall number 9, Linda McCracken is number 10, Nicola McCracken rather number 10, and Susan Tooby is number 11. Susan has had a lot of injury problems, out all last year best time 231.33 12th in the Olympic Games marathon and fourth in the 1988 uh, London Marathon she didn't finish this year just just standing there number 10 Nicola McCracken well we've just heard from the team management that she's been in a she's been in a real sweat in the last hour or so because she arrived at the track without having brought her own spikes there she is number 10 Nikki McCracken she didn't have her shoes with her she realized her husband had driven away and he got the shoes in the back of the car so she had an alternative pair of shoes which obviously wouldn't have been any good to run in a marathon in and fortunately just as she was on the warm-up track she saw her husband arrive at the stadium to watch the athletics so they went running after him and caught him and finally managed to get the shoes from him and she literally received the shoes 10 minutes ago in the in the call-up area so I hope she's managed to calm down now because there would have been nothing worse than her running in those other second-choice shoes, but hopefully it hasn't affected her too much. 
Just making a point about the course, uh, it is uh, one of the uh, hardest championship courses we've had in recent years, but as Brandon Foster said, uh, nothing. Uh, people in the main nowadays are looking for fast, flat marathon courses everywhere, but that's not possible here. They go around the harbour front in the first couple of miles, but then there's a long climb, uh, about a mile and a half to two miles, up into the wooded park area above the city. A climb of about 140 feet, 120 to 140 feet. That's right, it's rather scenic, but rather difficult. But I think the idea of putting them through the park after that particular climb is ov obviously they've designed the thing with the best thought of the athletes in mind. That's not always the case, because starting and finishing in this stadium is obviously a requirement of this championship and a requirement of this event. Um, but thankfully, it's a little bit cooler now than, uh, than it was this time yesterday. And the, the women were out and checking it out, checking it out and they were getting pretty nervous, but I'm pleased to say it's, a, it's slightly better. Obviously not the best conditions you could possibly have, though. Yeah, I was just going to say, Brent, out of the course yesterday, it felt hotter than this, although it's still just as humid as it was, and we hope that all these uh, lady athletes have taken on a lot of water. There are not too many overweight athletes out there, I can tell you. They look uh, kind of slim and mean and hard, and it's going to be that sort of course. There's Kramankova of the Soviet Union and uh, third last time and these are experienced athletes those who are going to survive this tough course and they'll be picking up water at every possible opportunity and i think that that side of the uh, marathon will be well organized in fact it's now fairly dull in the stadium very humid it's still very warm it has been hotter but there are some shaded parts unfortunately they seem to coincide with the long uphill grinds but uh, there is some shade and they're underway so the 1990 European Ladies Marathon Championship. 26 miles, 385 yards. You may have seen Panovska of, of Bulgaria on the inside. Just checking her own watch. Uh, she's obviously not going to be inside of the lead car too long. She's taking her own pace, judgment along with her, which is quite important. And Brendan Foster started his. Yeah, I started a little bit late, but I'm not running. I'm only watching. Actually, just uh, straight into the lead, Rosa Moda. And I was just thinking about it, you know. She, this is the only championship race in the whole of the, of the next seven or eight days where there'll only be one person in the race who's got a mind on winning. No other woman in this race will be thinking about winning because Rosa Moda is such a dominating character in the marathon. She's won championships, world and Olympic championships, and every other athlete in the field will have decided to let Rosa Moda do what she wants to do. And I noticed there she's wearing her own special Portuguese strip. The official Portuguese strip is red, white, and green, but Rose has decided she's going to wear her own one, red and white. Being followed by uh, number 13, Hominga of Holland. On the outside, wearing number 24, is the Russian, ranked number six in Europe, Yogarova, Valentina Yogarova, who uh, this year has already finished third overseas in the Osaka Marathon. Only a couple of hats being worn, which is quite a surprise. And although Susan Tooby is in the pack, it's interesting that Nicola McCracken and Sally East Eastall are right at the back. They are the two uh, at the back of the pack. And uh, Susan Tooby is about uh, five from the back. But uh, everyone knows that uh, there is only one leader, and they, those that follow her do so at their peril. And the gap already, before they ever get near to leaving the stadium, is something like 20 metres. Well, she's very much the favourite, but this is a very positive start indeed. And nobody going with her at all. She'll be running in the Great North Run, which we'll be able to see on BBC television in a couple of weeks. I think it's a week on Saturday. And she's looking for a fast half marathon there. But she's uh, clearly setting out to run her, very much her own race, Brendan. Well, obviously, in getting her to come to the Great North Run, we had discussions with her about this, and we said... Surely you won't be in a condition to run the Great North Run two and a half weeks <coughs> after the marathon. And she said, my plans for the European Championships are to win the championship for Portugal, make it a third championship in a row, and then con but conserve my energy in doing it so that I'm fit to run a half marathon two weeks later, and then eventually the New York Marathon in November. So uh, she set off with a vengeance, but don't be surprised by this, because if you remember the World Championships in Rome, she actually won by seven minutes. So she's used to being on, on her own. She's used to being out in front, and this won't bother her at all. Uh, just checking the two laps she's running in the stadium. They were just over 80 seconds apiece. Uh, so 80-second laps, 5 minute 20 miles, just over that. 
Uh, it's not a too sharp a pace, but uh, it's a fairly definite uh, pointer to the way she's going to attack this. She's clearly going to get it won, if she can, in the early stages. Being followed by uh, Kaminga of Holland, also up there, number 19. Skownic, one of the uh, outsiders for a medal. She's now 36 of Italy. And Rosa Mota has now got about 40 metres lead from Skownic, the Italian in second place, wearing number 19. 24 is Yogarova of the Soviet Union. And the British girls, you'll see, at the back, taking it very steady. And Nicola McCracken having a last look at the watch as she leaves the stadium. I wonder if we could get a bet on the same person leading them out of the stadium, leading them back into the stadium in about two and a half hours' time. Well, every four book predicts that uh, Rosa Mota will win it. There's no such thing as a, an odds-on favourite, I suppose, in a marathon, because so many things can go wrong. But really, she's by far the best athlete in this race. The least scenic part of the route now, as they wind their way through city roads, and then uh, they'll break into the ancient city, and that really is quite beautiful, and will give us some cool, because there are tall stone walls, and they run along the coastline, following that uh, green line, and there's a lovely loop all the way through the uh, the recreation park, which has got uh, olive trees almost covering them, um, and that will give them some shade. And it really is, uh, although it's uh, quite humid, it must be 10 degrees cooler than it was this time yesterday. I think the humidity could be an important uh, part of this race. The sun is not blazing down; it's hidden behind heavy cloud. But the heavy cloud has produced this very high humidity. There in second place is Skownic. The orange shorts of Hominga of Holland leading the main pack behind Skownic. And actually that picture is uh, rather deceptive because on the big zoom lens it's foreshortening a bit. The gap is about 40, 50 metres. And Skornich has pulled away from that pack and set, settled down in second place. So there could be a lonely run for Lo Rosa Mota. And Skornich, if she wants that silver medal, then a lonely road for her. Because I sense that in a race like this, in conditions like this, and in, in a, a championship race like this, um, the safety would be in that pack. Uh, something we haven't mentioned about the course, by the way, is that uh, unusually, it's not uh, a loop course out and back. It's a... Uh, course in which they run four laps of 10,000 meters on the road with that one and a half to two mile climb on each of the four laps so uh, it's not just a test of uh, physical endurance but mental endurance as well Skarnic is uh, 36 one and a half marathon this year and 71 26 so obviously in form seventh last year in the New York marathon so she's got uh, a fair number of miles behind her in competitive experience and that gap is anything from 20 to 25 metres now, from Skarnic to the uh, bunch who are vying for third place at the moment. The British girls there, you can see them all three towards the back. Well, Skarnic must have some confidence because otherwise the, uh, the, the ride with the pack is the easier route for much of the course and then to go. Uh, I don't think there's any sense that... Uh, She's trying to close the gap on Rosa Mota, but she's certainly uh, pitching a stall early on, and, uh, and that's the gap, but uh, there are two lonely runners away from the pack already, and that's going to make uh, for some interest. And you can see, just past the 2K mark, lovely downhill stretch, this uh, leading through the old city and down to the harbour. It's fairly flat, fairly good running before they start that long climb up to the city park. Well, she went through two kilometres there in seven minutes, seven minutes and two seconds, which, if you work it out, is about two hours, 27 pace, which is quite surprising that she's gone off this quickly. But what I would imagine, it would be so that she established the lead, which she has here now, and then could settle down in the later stages and not take too much out of herself. There won't be any other champions in this Games who run around conserving energy and not trying to take, on a, take anything out of themselves. We are saying early that she's the champion, and she, there's an awful long way to go, and the marathon is a tough event. This is a tough course, and these are difficult conditions. But Rosa Mota, one of the great women distance runners of all time, world and Olympic champion, two times European champion, and here running for Portugal and wanting to be 
the three times European champion. Ota looking very, very relaxed indeed. And I think actually she's slightly increased the lead now as we go down through the old city to the harbour side. Well, Rosa Mota still leading in the marathon. As we look over, the town has split. The athletes are at the other end of the town now. So I don't know why the, where the camera's looking there. But there's Rosa Mota leading, running comfortably through the woods on this slightly downhill bit. This is quite a pleasant part of the course. There's a scenic view over the sea there, but Rosa won't be interested in that. But it's nice and sheltered here. It's nicely cool here. And uh, she's enjoying that slight relief because she's been working quite hard, running very strongly, and continuing to run, on my calculations, around about 2 hours 27. Well, I don't imagine she'll come home in 2 hours 27, but I imagine she'll uh, relax in the last half of the race. There's Nellie Ertz, Nikki McCracken of Great Britain, Christine Kennedy of Ireland. There, That's an isolated group of three. I'm not convinced that they're the next uh, third, fourth, and second, third, and fourth. I'm sure there's a group including Kramenkova, the, the Soviet Union athlete that's in between this group of three, and the leader, Rosa Moda. Out of the runner's sight, and the last we saw, Rosa Moda was well clear and is about to complete the first lap. Got three more laps of about 10,000 metres on that loop. That looks like Ayrts of Belgium wearing number one, but we've no idea whereabouts she is in terms of placing. Well, funnily enough, we've only seen Rosa Moda and then that group of three. Rosa Moda there heading back towards the stadium, so when they come back near the stadium, we'll probably get a chance to check up on the positions. Of, uh, of the whole field, including the two Britons, or the three Britons. I suspect they're having trouble on the marathon course because they're in the wooded area and they've got to bounce the signal through the trees up to the helicopter above. And I think the picture's breaking up, which is why we're not getting the right sort of information. Uh, Rosa Motor now nearing the end of the park area and approaching, well, she can almost see the stadium from that area over the, through the trees. Although she's still above it and dropping gradually down. Lovely piece of freewheeling. It's one of the few parts that where you can freewheel and relax and then just enjoy the running. But Rosa Mota is uh, really meaning business here. She's pushing on all the time. She's certainly not relaxed at all at, at this point. Well, there's the chasing group in the marathon. And they are one minute, 40 seconds behind Rosa Mota, but that five is now down to four. Kramenkova seems to be in trouble there. She's clutching at her side. She seems to have a stitch or something. And there's Rosa Moda still running strong, still looking good, and still cruising in this marathon. But that second group is beginning to, the pressure beginning to come on. And all the time, it's been Skornich, the Italian, who's been pushing and pressing. Grottenberg, number 61, the tall Norwegian, and another, another Portuguese, Ferreira, and then one Soviet Union athlete left. And she's having a little bit of trouble. She's trying to relax her arms. That's Yegorova. So there are four there in the race for the two medals. And you can see how hard they're working. You can see they're beginning on this climb here. It's a gradual climb. It really does cause problems. And they've got two and a half laps to go, really. Two and a half, ten kilometer laps. And you can see that they're beginning to just draw back a little, just slow back and uh, feeling the pressure of this race. And the pace, one minute, 42 seconds behind Rosa Mota. That means they're running about two hours, 30 pace, which is really good running on this course. Brennan, I just watched that. Uh, they've corrected the time on that uh, clock. It's a, a minute 14 now. They flashed it up as a minute uh, 40 odd originally. But still, it's a decisive, uh, fairly commanding lead, isn't it? Well, I mean, we've talked about Rosa Mota. She's really running well. She's running strongly. She's looking relaxed. She's recognized some supporters on the side of the course. And a nice smile, a nice relaxed smile there from Rosa Mota. Skornich, the Italian, a minute and 14 seconds behind, as you said, David. And that means. Um, that means they're doing some running here, and that, that understands why this. That makes me understand why that group is whittling down from about 12 on the first lap, and now down to five, and then four, and there'll be a lot more action here in that in that particular part of the race. Skarnich, who has been leading the chasers most of the way. 
Rottenberg's looking very strong. But the climb imperceptible, but it goes on and on and on. Over a mile and a half, in which they climb about 120, 130 feet. Skarnic uh, with uh, Grottenberg, and also uh, right there, the Soviet girl, Yogorova. But Kramenkova, as Brendan suggested, having a bad time. She was the athlete who got the third place medal four years ago. You, you can see the pressure uh, here. You can see the applied pressure by Skonis, the Italian. Just keeps pushing them along. Just keeps doing a little bit more than some of the others want. And you can see they're sweating profusely. But I've noticed at every feed station, they've been taking two lots of drinks and they've been taking sponges wherever they could on the course. Actually, Portuguese distance running is very strong, both men and women, isn't it? With Ferreira there and Rosa Mota, well, she's in a class by herself. Apparently, the thing that gave Rosa Mota the biggest pleasure was the fact that she became the first Portuguese woman to win a medal in the Olympic Games. That was, first of all, in 84 in, in Los Angeles, but then she won the gold medal in, in uh, Seoul in 88, and really, she's the greatest female athlete there's ever been from that part of the world. In fact, you could see the pain on Rosa Mota's face a little bit there, that uh, grueling climb. Uh, it's a gradual climb, but it hurts if it's uh, such a long one. And the mental pressure as well, Brendan, must be quite something when you think you've got to do it twice again. That's right, you're getting to know the course, you're getting to know how difficult it is, but you see there, at every opportunity, they're taking on water, they're drinking and they're sponging themselves, and that really is totally necessary. And Skarnic is just pulling away, just pressing on all the, all the time up the hills. She's obviously a good hill runner. Some athletes are good up hills, some are good on the flat, and some can run down hills pretty well. But she's obviously a good climber, and she's doing ever so well there and just trying to uh, pull that group and get it down from less than four. Actually, she's turned the marathon into a time trial, really. On the marathon course, Rosa Mota plowing that lonely way as approaching the last lap of these 10,000 meter legs. Well, uh, Valentina Yegorova, the Soviet Union athlete, is actually only less than a minute behind Rosa Moda now. Now, I wouldn't dare suggest that Rosa Moda is struggling, but she doesn't look as controlled and as relaxed as she did earlier. Well, it's been a tough marathon. She's getting encouragement from the side, and I think she's answering them back. So uh, we may be, after all, we may be in for a race. She is having quite a race, but having said that, I think she's really feeling it. She set off very quickly, and there's the lady in second place, Yogorova. And uh, I think we just saw her in the top of the shot a, a moment ago. Just saw her legs in the top of the screen. It's difficult to tell the distance because of the foreshortening on the big zoom lens. But she's certainly looking happier than the leader, Brenton. She is, actually, and I noticed um, Rosa Muller's coach came running onto the side of the road and he started shouting instructions at her, and she was answering him back quite angrily, so I don't think she's as smooth as she was earlier, but it's been a tough road for her. This is a tough course. She set off at one at uh, 2 hours 27 pace, which would be a fantastic time on this particular course. She's not going to run that sort of time, but I think she might be in trouble. As she there goes 31 kilometers. That's just 11 kilometers from the end, just over six miles, and she doesn't look at all happy. 30 in one hour, 50 minutes and 50 seconds. So we'll just work out the pace there. But looking at Rosa Moda, that is not a relaxed athlete at all. She's very, very tired indeed. And I, I thought at the start she was very confident and went off very positively. But was it wise on this course in this humidity? Well, we'll certainly find the answer to that in the next couple of miles. And Emma Skornich of, of, um, of the Italian team coming down the road there and Sissel Grottenberg of Norway. Oh, we've got a fascinating race developing now because uh, there is just the prospect, just the prospect of motor being caught. And of course, once you come undone in a marathon, once the strength goes out of your legs and you begin to feel it, things start to happen very quickly. Well, on, on this particular course with those climbs, David, I think this is going to be really difficult. Now, it depends whether Yegorova has decided to attack Rosa Moda and if she knows that she's been cutting that lead down from 1 minute 15 to less than a minute, 
Now she's going after it aggressively. She's set off more conservatively. And I don't think I've seen Rosa Moda in a, in a race like this, in this sort of trouble. She's glancing down at the ground. She seems to be have trouble, having trouble with her lower legs. And you know, the athletes did talk about the course. And they said the one thing that they really didn't like about it, apart from the, the fact that it was a hilly course, was that the, the, ro the road surface was really uh, pretty bad. That's the shot from the helicopter that's flying above the lead vehicle, uh, sending the pictures back. And they're just outside the stadium, and my word, I would think Rosa Moda wishes this was the last time. It's a mind-blowing experience when you've got to run four laps of 10,000 metres, plus another uh, bit in the stadium as well. That's uh, Rebello Lelou of France in fourth place, we believe. Pity though we can't get a relative shot, of course we're not uh, dictating uh, the pattern of the coverage, it's uh, covered by domestic television here. Um, between, to see the gap between Mota and the Soviet athlete. I suspect I did see her in the top of the frame uh, about three or four minutes ago, but it's very difficult to tell just how big the gap is. Actually, I'm pleased I didn't have that bet on Rosa Mota as she, she left the stadium because it's not looking as good now. No, once, uh, once an athlete, Brendan, in a distance race like this starts to come apart and starts to feel it well th things happen very quickly i mean the legs go very quickly don't they and of course you've got the problem of going uphill down again well when the legs begin to go the mind begins to go and she came here absolutely convinced that this gold medal was just there for the taking maybe she hasn't been as respectful of the others maybe she hasn't been as respectful of the course as she should have been but she's a great great athlete there's her coach shouting more instructions from the side checking the distance I, I didn't think he would expect to do that but she looked a bit more relaxed that time as she went past so Valentina Yegorova the third string Soviet Union athlete running a great race here running the race of her life this is her first major championship and she's certainly beginning to tell she looks she looks comfortable she looks controlled I noticed at every feed station though she's been getting as much liquid on board and she's been she's been uh, sponging herself so Rosa Moda, she's probably in her sights now because the course straightens out as they get around here onto the seafront. And I think we're going to have an exciting race. I do think, Brendan, looking at Rosa, she does, uh, she's on an easier part of the course. It's a flat part of the course here, and she's moving a little bit more comfortably, isn't she? They're back in, uh, well, either third or fourth place. That's uh, Grottenberg. In fact, she might have dropped back to fifth. It's one of the um, Portuguese she's passing, Machado. It's actually quite difficult to relate the minor places because we haven't had the consistent coverage. So Grottenberg was running very, very well for the first 12, 15 kilometers. And I'm quite honestly, I don't know in what position she is right now. But the race at the front is the one that we're getting much more interested than we ever thought we would be as they come through the old town with a few twists and turns. And at this point, Valentina Yegorova won't be able to see Rosa Moda. But as, they, as she gets onto the seafront here, where Rosa Moda is, she'll be able to spot the distance and she'll, be able, she'll have a wristwatch running with her own time on or she'll be getting instructions from the side. But Rosa Moda, she's worked hard for this one and she really desperately wants it. A bit difficult to tell the gap, actually, but uh, I did recognise bits and pieces there when, from when we went round the course of the old town. I would reckon she's got to be 40 seconds to 50 seconds still behind because she was twisting through the place where the old theatre is. Well, as she comes along the seafront here, they, they, it's, it's, it, that's the beginning of the climb, and I think that climb will be the one that tells, because once she gets over that climb, it's a steady downhill towards the stadium, and then a left turn, and as she sees the stadium approach, she'll be, she'll be more confident. But there's still an awful lot of running to be done, at least another half an hour of running, and we can't see from here, but that gap, about, about 45 seconds we've estimated, Rosa Moda now reaching that crucial stage where she turns away from the harbour in just a, what, two or three hundred metres, I suppose, now, and starts the long climb up to the city park area. It's a climb of about a mile and a half to two miles, rising very gradually indeed, and that area of the uh, course, and indeed down through the woodland towards the finish, is, is the best piece of road probably on the circuit. Well, she's just coming past our hotel on the seafront there. And as I know, as I found out this morning, that uh, from there turning left and up where she's going, it's quite hilly. If you turned left, Bren, you'd have been to the sea. <laughs> Sorry about that. My geography's not that bad, David. 
I wasn't going any faster than Rosa Motor is either. There, she's got some running to do now. She's got to apply herself here. She'll know exactly how far ahead she is, and she'll know she's getting a more of a race than she wanted. I don't think she's ever thought about the fact that she was going to have to race for this European title, but she certainly is going to have to do that. And she doesn't look good. I've never seen her look as tired as this in a marathon. We've seen her run in the, in the World Championships, if you remember. She was seven minutes clear of the field, and she just kept going and kept going and kept going. I'll tell you one thing, she won't enjoy this course, and I bet she never, ever comes back to run a marathon in split. Actually, this is the uh, point, I think, Brendan, where she just turns... Let's check that again. Yeah, I, I would think that gap from the background, let's look at the background shots, has got to be still about three to 400 uh, metres. But I think the next two miles are crucial. I think the climb up to the beginning of the town park before the downhill is exactly where Rosa Moda's got to do her running. You can see she's on the seafront here, and this is where they climb away from the seafront along the, along the coast, 33 kilometers there, and we'll try and get a reference point from that. Well, uh, there's a good shot for you. There's Motor, and in the background, we've got the second athlete. So she was a lot closer than we thought. And there's absolutely no doubt she's closing very, very quickly indeed. We just had a report from, from the course that there was a minute gap, but that's not a minute by any means. Well, th this is serious now for Rosa Moda. I would be surprised if she knew that, that, that she was that far behind. So back on the marathon course, the battle for gold and silver very much on now. And we've got a race. Valentina Yeager over there in her first major championship. She's just about to give the world champion and the Olympic champion the race of her life. And she'll get the fright of her life if she turned over and looked over her shoulder because right behind that, that police motorbike, she's there. But don't underestimate Rosa Moda. We are going to have a race, but I don't think she'd give up her title that easily. She hasn't come all this way and prepared for this thing. To just to give it away lightly, but uh, goodness me, I didn't think we'd ever see anything like this today. We've been surprised at the second half of this race because Rosa Mota set off at good style and good pace, looking good and looking strong. Maybe she's going a little bit too fast for the course, but goodness me, we didn't expect anything like this. Actually, the surprising thing is, Brandon, I mean, she's coming to run in your promotion, the Great North Run, the half marathon, the week on Saturday. Uh, which will be shown on BBC television. I mean, she did tell you she was looking for an easy today, didn't she? Uh, but uh, the way she started, uh, well, it didn't uh, ever look to be the case. You're absolutely right there. And the thing is, she's definitely not having an easy one here. She's having a, the, the, probably the hardest marathon she's had for an awful long time. Whatever happens in this race, of course, uh, Rosa Morda is regarded by many as the greatest female marathon racer of all time. And uh, it's difficult to think that... Uh, this Portugal's most successful and celebrated athlete was in bitter dispute with her federation. And when she started to run, she was shouted at in the streets in that chauvinistic society. She's uh, not wearing a national vest at the moment. She's had this battle with her federation, a battle for recognition. She's raised the uh, stature of women's athletics throughout Portugal and throughout Europe. She's now the most celebrated athlete they've had. She was uh, presented to the queen. And really, she says her most important marathon was Seoul. Her most enjoyable was Athens, where she started her career. She said it changed her life. She's got a sister, Paula, who runs 400-meter hurdles. And uh, that margin of victory that Brendan Foster was talking about earlier in Rome of 7 minutes 21 is still regarded by many as the greatest margin ever in a major race when she beat Lisa Martin. So whatever happens in this race today, at 32, this is still one of the great, great marathon runners of all time and one of the great female athletes of all time, Rosa Mota, now 32. Well, the gap is closing all the time on the marathon course, and Motor knows it. An anxious look back. They, actually, just there's about 100 metres here, Brendan, where they go back downhill before you start climbing again. I must be honest, she looks a bit more comfortable downhill than she does up the hill, but there's one more climb, and I'm sure that Yegorova is going to catch her. Now, whether that makes 
Whether Rosa Mota is going to react to that or not, we'll find out. But I think she should be concentrating now on her plan to win the race and competing in the last couple of kilometers. She didn't expect to be in this position. She didn't expect to have to do that, but it looks as though it's going to happen. And I think Rosa Mota should be telling herself, she's going to catch you, she's going to come alongside you, but you've still got the race to win. We don't, she, we don't know how tired Valentina Yegorova is, but we'll find that out in a few minutes. But let's face it, this moment, I never thought we'd see in this marathon. I thought Rosa Mota was going to stay clear and I'm amazed that this is happening, but I think Rosa Moda, she's a great champion. She's not going to give up easily, but she's going to have to think about it now. Don't let her go away. Stay with her when she comes past you, and she'll be wanting to go past quickly, and Rosa Moda is really going to face the challenge. And it's happening at the worst part of the course for Rosa. It's happening on the uphill, because I thought if she could get to this uphill point, just a few seconds ahead, she might be able to cruise down into the stadium, but that's not the case. This is going to be a fantastic competition. Yegareva settling in, taking on the liquid, having a look, looking surely for the eyes. That's where the weakness will show. And there's acknowledgement over the left shoulder. Rosa Mota looks at her adversary. Still taking the drink on board, not gone cruising past. There's a smile, I think. I think there's a deal of camaraderie out there, Bren. She may not even know who it is, Ron. She'll know it's one of the Soviet Union athletes. But if she, if she thought it was going to be Yegorova before the race, she's a better judge than we are. Well, this is racing at its very best. Tired athletes who are just about uh, bursting at the seams in terms of energy expenditure. And they've got a mind battle on, and it's going to be the toughest mind that wins out there. Motor who uh, spent her energy on getting out in front and must have relaxed has now got to conjure up that, uh, that will to win again because it's deserted her for a while. She didn't think she's going to need it and she needs it now, Brent. Well, I think she just gained a slight psychological advantage there because Yegorova was desperate to get past her at that point. And that's psychologically what she should have done. But Rosa Mota wouldn't let her. She'd let her stay alongside her. She wouldn't let her pass. She's probably been gathering the, herself for the fact that she was going to be caught when she got that information from her coach on the track side. And now she said, I didn't come here to lose it. I didn't come here to have some Soviet Union athlete take my title away from me. And I certainly didn't come, away, come here to, to give it away after having led for three quarters of the race. So she's desperate to win this race. And I think Yegorova's in slight trouble while there. You can see her legs are not lifting very high off the ground. And Rosa Moda, again, just maybe a little bit of breath of life into her. And she's pushing up that hill and she's opening that gap. She's got the few yards. She's gaining another psychological advantage. And she's a great athlete and a great champion. Maybe we've seen the race come and go in those last couple of hundred meters. I'm sure you're right, because the look over the left shoulder at Yegareva, Yegareva buckled, and uh, she came up to her shoulder and drifted away. And this is a burst, and it's a punishing burst. And this is the woman that's been there before, and Yegareva hasn't been there before. And there's just enough reserve and enough resolve to get away from this brave, brave Soviet athlete but uh, Rosa Mota drawing on all the reserves at the moment. And I think you're right, Brent. That was the moment of the race. It was a crushing moment, but this is a great champion in action. Well, less than five kilometers left in the marathon. And Rosa Mota led for two hours. And then she went through two minutes of crisis. She looked over her shoulder and was amazed to find that she's beginning to pull away from the Soviet Union athlete Valentina Yegorova. But what a champion she's proving to be, even though this race may have another, uh, may have another drama because the downhill bit, she's beginning to stretch out and, and relax, but she's glancing all the time over her shoulder with real anxiety. The Soviet Union athlete, maybe after she got over that little that spell, five kilometers is a long way in a marathon, and we're finding that out today. Well, Motor, of course, has won the only two European marathon championships ever held. Will this be the third? Having another look, and I think she's growing in confidence all the time. She seems to be stretching out in a more relaxed manner. Well, she's just about to come to the point at the highest point of the course, and she's driving into it. She's really pushing along there. Because when she gets to there and begins to, to, to run downhill, I'm sure she's gaining confidence from the downhill pieces. But what a race we've seen here today, and what an amazing turn up, really. I mean, we thought Rosa Moda was the, the hottest favorite of the whole games. And I'm sure she didn't expect anyone to challenge her. She got clear, she relaxed, and I'm sure she thought she was out for a, just a steady run. Because she said she didn't want to take too much out of herself. 
because of the races she's got coming up, including the including the New York Marathon. But uh, maybe she'll have to go back to the drawing board now. Well, they're in the last mile in the marathon, and Rosa Moda just got that few yards lead, and she really hasn't increased it too much. She's still looking over her shoulder anxiously, and Valentina Yegorova, the Soviet Union athlete, has begun to get her second win there after that challenge for Rosa Moda. But Rosa Moda, look at her, looking over. She's really nervous about this, and she's, she can see the stadium now, and she can, she can hear the helicopter overhead. We, we can see them for the first time. We haven't seen them for a few miles because it was a bit dark in the woods there. But here comes Rosa Moda, looking good and looking strong. Actually, the uh, sight of the stadium and the lights will inspire her. Look at that great light, blaze of light in the sky. In fact, as you're dropping down through the woods, Brendan, through the woods themselves, you can actually see the stadium. Well, she's been able to see the stadium for the last three or four miles, and I bet she's been thinking, I wish I could get a bit, cl bit closer to it, because she's obviously been struggling. She's been running hard, and she's been having to work about it. But the thing I'm most impressed about with her today is the fact that she, she came here, she was in a race, she didn't expect the race to happen, but it happened, it took her by surprise, and there, was a, there were a couple of moments when you thought maybe she was going to give it away altogether, but no, she dug in, she dug deep, and she's desperate for this title, but she is struggling there, she looks to be having a really rough time just climbing that little incline before they start the absolute descent of the stadium. Tell you what, I was on that yesterday, Brandon, this little the first time you go, I think my word, I should think now she's on there for the fourth time, she's feeling it. And of course, the Soviet athlete, uh, well, she must be gaining inspiration as well, not just from the light, but the fact she has closed uh, just a little bit. But it's going to be hard work to close that gap of 20 to 30 metres now. Well, there she crosses over, and she knows she's just got to run down that thing and through the tunnel. But I'll tell you what, in her life, she can see the stadium there, but in, in her life, she's come into the, into the stadiums four times to collect gold medals. But I bet she's never been as relieved this time to see the stadium. And you can see how she's almost turning her whole body to try and look over her shoulder. She really should now just concentrate on her running. She's working. It's going to be really tough there. It's going to be really, really difficult. And she's had to work an awful lot harder for this title than she thought she was going to do. And that psychologically is tough. She came here and she was talking about having an easy race as possible. But well, she's had as tough a race as possible. She's had a fantastically difficult race. And I, there were times when we were worried about her because as she left the stadium, it looked like she was just going to have a, an afternoon stroll. But there was no way that happened. The course, the conditions, and third thing, and the most important thing, the Soviet athlete has run the race of her life. She certainly has. I think we all uh, discussed this, and we said there'd be no personal bests on this course, but she could be very well close to it. Yagorova's best time is 2.29.47. Uh, the clock at the moment, as you can see, well, she's going to be outside that, but uh, not very much outside it. And considering the nature of the course, it has been a tremendous race. See when she turns, we can perhaps check the distance, and it looks like still around 20 to 30 meters. And Rosa Moda, she'll have, she'll have checked the last part of the course. You can see the lead car there. She'll have been mesmerized by that for the last few miles because the light coming out from there. But there she is. She's been in this situation before, and she was determined to be in this situation again. It looks altogether different inside the stadium, and she's, in, she's on her way through the tunnel. She'd have dreamt about this tunnel, but I'll tell you what, she'll have never have dreamt about the race she's had to get into that tunnel in first place. Look. The World Championships, two years ago, she won by seven minutes. And the Olympic Games, she won marvelously, and she won it comfortably, won it well. This one, she's won in a different manner. A glorious champion and a great racer. A much better race and a much tougher race than she ever imagined. She'll be absolutely delighted in, the, in this stadium. But I'll tell you what, she's had an awful, awfully difficult race. The crowd rising, and how she must welcome that. She keeps looking back all the time. Looking very, very tired indeed. She's got to go all the way around the stadium yet. And it's not over. Yegorova has certainly started to lengthen her stride. And Moda's looking back all the time, I think, is helping Yegorova. What a finish to the women's marathon. After leading by a minute and 14 seconds, probably more than that at one stage, we've got a race like this in a stadium. 
and Yegorova doesn't seem to be making too much impression now with well over 200 meters left and the crowd really really living with this moment as Yegorova tries again but the gap hasn't closed it's still about 20 meters 25 meters and surely Rosamoto will hang on now I've never seen an international athlete look back in such de desperation so often in a race She's really, really feeling this. But Yegorova just can't get those extra few strikes closer that she needs. And now the finish is in sight. The woman who has always won the European Championship. She won the first one, she won the second one, and now in this third running of the European Women's Marathon Championship, she's coming home to take the gold. Yegorova finishes with the silver as Rosa Mota celebrates with a wave of victory. A race to remember, Brendan. An absolutely fantastic race, but I'll tell you what, she's just proved what a great champion she is, and her coach is going to be as relieved as she is. Unbelievable race. I'll tell you what, Brendan, she ought to go over and give the Russian girl a hug. I think she's going to do that next. And boy, that's deserved. That's a meeting of great athletes and great spirits. That's a beautiful marathon race. And Rosa Mota's still full of beans. And I would think, actually, there's a moment in that marathon race that will live in most people's minds forever. Out on the mountain, when the Soviet athlete, having been well over a minute behind, caught Rosa Mota, the champion. And the champion took one look at her and started to go away again. Well, I'm amazed that she's managing to do a lap of honor because I thought she'd be sitting or lying at the end of this race. I didn't think so. She'd find any energy left but uh, just shows you what a great runner she is. Three times European champion. As you said, David, the only person ever to win the European title. And we're still waiting for the third athlete to come into the stadium. We've missed her for the last few miles, and we're not quite sure who it is, but she must be approaching the stadium now. And I think Rosa Mota, you could tell by the way she embraced the Soviet athlete, that she respects her. She's got a newfound rival. And I'll tell you what, I bet she never wants to come back to split to run a marathon. She was desperate struggle here and yet what a, a revival can be produced from victory that's amazing that the other the other revival was when she came into the finishing straight and she saw the line and she definitely wasn't going to give it away there she'd led for every inch of the race oh, motor still uh, going around there we wonder if that's the third girl if it is, it's possibly the Italian. Uh, Skarnic, I think it is, out on the course. But these two have had such a battle, it's taken them minutes away from the rest of the field. Uh, Lalou came through very late there. She was improving all the time. The French girl, who was uh, born, by the way, in Portugal. Well, I didn't know that, but I'll tell you what she's proved today. She set off so conservatively. We never saw her for the first half of the race, and we only saw her in the later stages. But it proved that this course is a killer, and a, a conservative start and a conservative run was the best way and the best result you could possibly get. Well, the flag of Portugal being paraded. She may be having a row with the National Federation and not wearing the country's vest, but she's proud to wear the country's flag, or wave it. And uh, she's still out there celebrating. Lalu now with uh, about 250 metres left. And just approaching the stadium now is the fourth athlete, and I think that's going to be the Italian Emma Skornic. Just in the tunnel there, Emma Skornic, who again, just she was the one who went after Rosa Mota. She was the one who probably went too hard in the early stages, and she's paid for it in the later stages as Lalu came through. Even though she's having a tough time now, a conservative way is the only way to run this marathon course. The Italian in fourth place, and Lalu, by the way, 
is another athlete who's really suffering. Just take a close look at her. She's really, really suffering, but enjoying the feeling of bronze. She's not found it very easy, but that conservative start paid off. And now she can relax even if she comes down the finishing straight and start celebrating. Well, I think there are one or two lessons for the men here who uh, have their own race towards the end of the championship programme. So, the 1-2-3 motor wins it. Yegorova in second place. And in third place, Lalou of France.